Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another garden video. So today we are talking all about David Austin roses. I have two that I am planting today in containers. And then we're going to go over to my mom's house where she is planting two climbers on either side of her arbor. So we are starting with the showstopper, the queen of Sweden, or as my mom calls her, the queen of Sheba, who is a beautiful blush pink, slight apricot in the middle, a uh, peony style cabbage rose. I love her. She was my top choice. Um, and she stays smaller than some of the other roses in the David Austin collection, two to three feet wide by about four, maybe five feet tall, which is perfect for this container, the centerpiece of my raised bed garden in front of my shed. So we're gonna go ahead and get her potted up and then move up the garden um, to where I am placing my Emily Bronte rose. And then we'll pop over to mom's house where we plant her two climbers I cannot remember, they're pink climbers. I cannot remember the name of them right now, uh, but I will put it up on the screen right here so you will know all three. And I'll probably have put them in the title, so you probably already know. But in order to plant these in containers, there's a couple things we need to do first. So starting off with, I am hooking mine up to drip, so they will be automatically watered, which means my brand new pot I had to drill out those drainage holes in the bottom, two drainage holes, and I drilled a third hole for my tube, for my drip tube. So the drip tube is gonna go all the way across the garden and tap into my existing drip. That makes it very, very easy. And then I just ran this up through that hole. We will put a uh, emitter on the end that can water the rows right at the root ball so it gets constant water every morning uh, automatically. I then went ahead and I put compost in the bottom about third of this container so it has really good organic food at the bottom where we want the roots to reach to. We're also going to hand feed this guy at least a handful, maybe two handfuls of rose tone fertilizer. Ooh, this bag is always so hard to open. There we go. We're gonna put this right on top of the compost, mix it in a bit. We want those roots to go down and to reach into the pot as far as they'll grow. And this is a good sized pot. Um, I did some research on kind of what the, the right size for a container rose like this would be for long term. I wanna keep her in here for at least three to five years maybe, and then eventually I'll probably plant her out in the garden um, when I move. Woo. So I'm planning, planning to move in three to five years, but that's a whole other problem. So let's go ahead and place the rose in here, see if she's level. We wanna place her a smidge high, and then we will start putting our potty mix, and you wanna make sure you use good quality, quality potty mix, lots of nutrition, when our plants are in containers, they're getting no extra nutrients from the ground. So we have to make sure to give them all the nutrients they need. And this baby is actually nearly thornless, which is nice. Definitely a perk for a rose like this that I'm going to be walking around all the time. And I will put some pictures up. I got this, this little lady at my local nursery as soon as mom and i heard they had david austin roses we literally went running to get some uh, and they were bare root they came in bare root about seven weeks ago this was a bare root bare root rose seven weeks ago she smells so good and she's already blooming the other nice thing about this specific queen of sweden rose is that her blooms are nice and strong and they stay facing upwards all times, even when they're full of water. I have another cabbage rose climber on my house. She's gorgeous, but when her blooms get heavy, they tend to face downwards, which is just a little sad. So these are really upright and tall, which is great for A, your roses, but B, especially, like I look at this right outside of my kitchen window, 
I want to be able to see the blooms. I don't want them to always be facing down. So I will pop in some footage here from the nursery. A, where I picked her up because there was plenty of other options and B, what they looked like seven, eight weeks ago. I'll put the exact date today and when they got them in on the screen so you can see how long it's been from bare root to this. Now that we've got her settled in her pot and I like the positioning, I came up and looked at her from y'all's perspective, we are going to start putting our putty mix in around her, making sure she's really secure and that root ball is tightly packed. We don't want to go up too far over the crown of the rose at all. Roses don't like really anything around the crown of the plant. so. Just go right up to the crown of the plant and then make sure all the roots are packed in nice and tight. mulching this area, but I wanted to get this lady done first so that I could hide her drip tubes under the mulch. I don't really want to underplant her with anything. I want her to have the full use of this pot but I could always put some moss or some pretty rocks or even just some mulch on top to shade her, keep her cool. But again, anything I put on top, just keep away from the crown of the plant. She don't like it.
will take the tag off eventually, but I like to leave them for at least a little while with new plants, just in case. I don't remember what they are. Just videos help with that. Or, you know, I'm doing everything I, I can to take care of this guy correctly. You know, I'm planting him in nice, good soil, giving him water every day, feeding him with rose tones, and he dies immediately. There is a three month return to get a new one. If you're not taking care of your plants, I, I don't return things to local nurseries that, that I've ne neglected, you know? But something like this rose that was not inexpensive, if I am doing what I'm supposed to do, that's what the warranties are for. Just don't abuse it, you know? That is packed in good and tight. I'm gonna water her in, so we'll clean off the pot. Ooh, gloves need watered in. They're dirty. Use almost that whole bag. We would have used the whole bag. This pot can hold a cubic foot of dirt if we hadn't put compost in the bottom. Whew. Did not almost fall, that was someone else. Here's our emitter. I'm gonna start with a two gallon an hour emitter. It has drain holes, so hopefully that's not too much. But if it is, I can always switch her to a lower one gallon an hour. This poor little bloom is already done. This baby is a rebloomer though. So, Keep her fed, keep her water, keep her happy. She should bloom for us all summer long. I'm gonna bring y'all in for a close up look and then we're gonna go up the hill to plant Emily Brunton. Alright y'all, we're at the top of the hill. You can see my beautiful Queen of Sweden down below. And now we are focusing on the Emily Bronte, which is just putting out buds. This is a beautiful rose with a pink outside and a creamy yellow interior. It gets about four feet wide by three feet high, probably a bit bigger in our climate. Whew. And Although they've seen better days, they fell over a few times last week and are struggling, they'll rebound. My knockout roses behind me are a soft, dreamy yellow. I will put a picture up on the screen. And I think the pink and yellow combination of Emily Bronte with the yellow knockout rose uh, standards behind them will be beautiful. We're doing a little trio of pots here with a big rose, my small dwarf Alberta spruce, and then just a fun little accent pot. This is my uh, sweet Alyssa. This is Snow Princess, so if she's happy, she will get huge. I also have some hydrangeas in this bed, um, some Rose of Sharon, Texas Sage. It, it will be a pretty little spot, but it's mostly big border shrubs. And then I'm doing a few pots at the top, a few pots at the bottom. So 
when you are potting up anything, another fun trick to not have to fill the whole pot from the sides is to put the nursery bucket in your pot, fill around it, and then put the root ball in that hole. So I've taken our other container from Miss Queen of Sweden, Sweden, and I filled my pot around it. Now we should be able to just sneak sweet little Emily Bronte in this hole and fill around the top. Yeah. I think I want level that to be the front. Perfect. All right, I will get all three of these pots connected to drip in this area mulched in, and it will be glorious. I cannot wait. There's another Rose of Sharon going right where I am, but um, has to be planted later. So I think this is gonna be really pretty. If you want to see these buds open and bloom, make sure you're following along with my monthly garden tours, because I'm sure I will catch some video for the next garden tour. In the meantime, let's head to mom's house where we're going to video her climbing rose planting. root of the the old rose yeah maybe we should keep them <laughs> and plant you them never know they are strong plants i know that's what i was thinking they've got green on them this um no those two over there yeah. that oh, yeah, one that has green and the one over there i'd plant those along your fence yeah yeah okay yeah i figure heck mine as well all right we are on filming okay all right so this is where mom had her piggy martin rose last year and it is a glorious rose it's been here what two seasons yeah but it didn't love this spot mine has gone three times bigger than mom's the, the word is ape <laughs> poo poo and, and so and a much nastier way to say it mom decided she wanted ape shit poo poo two roses on either side <laughs> of the arbor and um and a rose that will bloom more more consistently because while the piggy martin is glorious when it blooms when it blooms it only blooms in the spring, in the spring and then it'll have a smaller flush later in the season these are david austin strawberry hill roses and they're supposed to bloom and they're more consistently. supposed to bloom consistently so it's a short climber it can climb up to 10 feet so we got one for either side of the arbor and they should meet at the top yep. This is the easy side. Since we already dug this side for the Peggy Martin, it's easy. The other um, side will be harder. I think you might have to go deeper. I got to get the rose tone too, not the other stuff. But we want nice fluffy dirt. So we bit, you want to dig <coughs> a slightly bigger hole than you need if you can. And then roses don't like their, their heads, their crowns to be wet. So we want to plant it a smidge high. Yeah. 
But this is a, they can't see you. Ooh, the, the camera is aimed low, so keep yeah. whatever you're showing down here. This is a really deep can. Yes. So we have to dig pretty deep. We needed the reciprocating saw to dig this hole in the first place, so we might need it on the other side. Maybe. We'll find out. All right, I'm gonna get the rose down. Let's see how deep it is. Quit going in there, dirt. I'm getting you out. All right, let's check it out. I think that's probably good because it's not. Up I think to that's good because it'll the be the top of the can. Yeah, and the, and the rose is to here. Yeah. Let's try it now. I took these roses out of the car. My arm got quite scratched up, so they have pretty good thorns. I don't know if it's these or one of my two, but one of them has good thorns. Yep. So be Throw careful. In some rose toes. I think you need at least like, three handfuls. Okay. What do you think? Just make sure there's enough for the other one. There is. Okay. Oh, that stuff smells so good. Oh, it does. Yuckety yuck. Yeah, we're being facetious. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Woohoo! Talk about some ape poo poo. These were planted by our nursery and these plants. I think they need to go this way. Yeah, they came in bare root. And yeah. I probably already told y'all that I have my roses to do and I brought y'all to the nursery, but FYI, these oh. roses five weeks ago were bare root. Yep, they were. Now they have root balls and buds. <laughs> Look how pretty they are. You'll need to start a little bit more. Fixing her up the arbor. Not as much. But not, not quite yet. Yeah. I mean, like, only I think one or two might even need, could use a tie to the arbor. Right now they're kind of more bush size. Yeah. All right, let's put this back. We have a lot of uh, pine straw, pine straw here. over here because of my tree. I have a pine tree back here. So we put the we put the compost down, but then it it has its own mulch mulch with the pine straw. And then these babies are on drip. Yep. So we'll just pop that emitter back in. We'll have to do one for the other side. Yeah, I don't have one. And they will both have water. It's okay. easy to tap in though. Move yeah. the tag so I can water it. Okay. We made a little well kind of around the root of the plant, the crown of the plant. I haven't really um, fixed up this side of the garden yet. This is the yeah. only bed I haven't worked on yet. Y'all are on the unfinished brick uh, border. Yeah, my unfinished brick path. Because we are still working on this side. Yep. All right. All right. I got to move the camera. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want a caveat as to how good the Peggy Martin is, here are two roots we just found after digging up the whole rose five weeks ago that have already started growing new roses, new growth, new green growth. So we're going to go plant these on either side of the Peggy Martin where we moved her along the fence. Let's see if we can't get some more Peggy Martin roses out of it. My buddy, bare root one. Yeah. These two are the old ones. This bare root one said great. I mean, they've already got buds on them this year. This is the little iris we put in. I just took all the dead bones. Oh, pull it over. Okay. Okay. This one's gonna be a little harder. funny that they were like, they would sell us a three month warranty to move up the car. No. 
they came with a standard three month warranty. If you bought their compost, you got a three year warranty. Oh, three year. Oh, oh, oh. That's why I was contemplating that. Oh. Okay. Three months when we bought it before we went on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> but their compost and mulch and potting soil, $30. $18, which means it was $48 for the warranty. The rose was 56. The, the, the warranty should not be as much as the plant. No, because- Or where's the other can? Get the other can. For, for $48, I can just buy a new rose. If the warranty is supposed to replace the rose, if it dies, then the only reason to buy it is if it's like a third the cost, you know, not two thirds, three fourths. Some more of the back dirt. I put it pretty close under the arbor too. You know. I think that might be good. Almost. I'll see. It's wide enough. It's definitely wide. Well, I think so because the root ball won't be as sturdy, and the a little bit more. Off the sides. Well, down here, yeah. Yeah, watch the. The problem is. There's that a big root down there. Do it more on this side. Though. Okay, watch that iris. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Not to do it. 